Imagine actually stepping inside a place where history was born. Nestled on the picturesque coast of Andalusia, Spain, is a small monastery that carries the nickname the Bethlehem of the Americas. Here, Christopher Columbus first came with his six-year-old son in 1485, begging for bread and water. The Franciscan monks welcomed him in, connected him to the Queen of Spain, and encouraged his exploration of the New World. Columbus stayed here, prayed here, networked and imagined here. And it was from here that Christianity spread to the New World, allowing it to become the largest religion the world has ever seen. Come with me as I explore the top 10 wonders inside the Monastery of Christopher Columbus. Hello everybody and welcome back. And here I am in the south of Spain in an almost unknown small town right on the ocean. Why do you think that I'm here? Well, this monument right here, this is the monument to the discoverers of the new world. Discovered for Spain, of course. And it was from here at this monastery, which is right next to this monument, that Columbus prayed and met with people who were instrumental in him getting the contract to go to the new world. The monastery was founded in 1261 upon the decree of a papal bull to establish a community on the coast of Andalusia. It's called the Monastery of La Rabida. It sits on the Atlantic coast where the mud red Rio Tinto River meets the Odiel River. And it's on the exact same spot where the Phoenicians and the Romans also chose to build altars to their gods. The Arabs later erected a watchtower called a Rebat for Muslim ascetics, much like Christian monks of later years. It was from here that the Franciscans built a beautiful white monastery using a mixture of Gothic and Moorish revival architecture on top of a hill overlooking the town and the entry point into Spain. To imagine what it would have been like for Columbus to arrive here begging for food with his young son, Let's go to number 10 on the list. The monument to the discoverers and the original entryway into the monastery. Once you've gotten a look at the inspiring modern discovery monument, which commemorates the momentous journey across the unknown seas, begin your journey where Columbus himself would have entered the monastery at the original doors. For number nine, be captivated by the vibrant frescoes painted by the renowned Daniel Vasquez Diaz. These masterpieces vividly depict the life and times of Columbus here in the town of Palos de la Frontera, offering a colorful insight into the era's cultural and historical context. These beautiful murals were painted in the early 1900s and were part of the grand muralist movement that would include great muralists like Diego Rivera. Number eight, dive much deeper into the narrative with modern artistic interpretations that bring to life the critical moments of Columbus's journey and his interactions with the Franciscans. This adds a contemporary perspective to this historic tale, and it ended up being one of my favorite parts of this monastery museum because the paintings were just so breathtaking. Number seven is the seafaring exhibit. Here you can explore the intricacies of 15th century navigation with a detailed exhibit featuring models of the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. This gives you a tangible connection to this maritime adventure undertaken by Columbus and his crew.
For number six, step into the dining hall in a monastery known as the refectory. There were always 12 monks in a monastery, at least in a Franciscan monastery, and that was to represent the 12 apostles. So you'll see when we go in here to the refectory that there are 12 places to sit, to eat. Now I imagine that when there were guests and things like that, they kind of just squeezed in because there's a lot of room. I mean, one monk doesn't need all of this space, right? Number five, the reception room and the smaller room known as the Belen de las Americas, the Bethlehem of the Americas. In these rooms, discover the actual places where crucial discussions would have taken place between Christopher Columbus and the Franciscan friars. This whole place kind of gives you a really in-depth feel for what it must have been like in those early stages and how he would have had to develop all those relationships with the local people. It's really quite fascinating. So it was in a little room like this that they call the Belen de las Americas, which is like the manger of the Americas, where Christopher Columbus probably had one of his pivotal discussions with the father who would hook him up. Please, if you're enjoying this video, click like so the algorithm knows to send you more great videos just like this. And check out the description section on your phone or your computer if you wanna know how to get more involved with this channel and get a closer look at everything that's going on. Number four, experience the austere quarters inside the monastery in a room where Christopher Columbus may have spent his nights, a humble abode reflecting the monkish lifestyle that he temporarily would have adopted during his stay at the monastery. Number three, the cloister. This is the heart of the monastery, a serene quadrangle that offers a moment of tranquility and reflection, surrounded by whispers of history and the beauty of its architectural details. This Franciscan monastery would have been a place of refuge. It was a place where anyone could take refuge, and this is definitely one of the places where Columbus came. It also had a strategic vantage point. It was a great place for sailors, and he collected a lot of knowledge from the local sailors here. But most importantly, he met an astronomer who was also a monk, who had been the treasurer at the court of Queen Isabella. And that was one of his keys. Columbus really worked it here at La Rabida Monasterio. Number two is very specific. It's the Islamic-influenced Mudéjar Arch that provides the entryway into the chapel where Columbus prayed. Not only is this a beautiful piece of art and architecture, but it has great symbolism because it reminds us that the Christianity that spread all across the Americas and around the world started in bases just like this, which were a mix of Islamic and Christian cultures. Finally, number one, the chapel. Here you can stand in the very place where Columbus would have knelt and prayed for the success of his expedition, a sacred space that has witnessed the hopes and fears of those on the brink of the unknown, making it the most poignant site within the monastery and one of the sites that has the most original architecture in the whole place. So it was literally right here where Columbus prayed, took communion. It's here where a few important people are buried, including one of the Pinzon brothers which you'll see were also crucial to the voyage. This was an incredibly important place. Being in the same place where Columbus asked God for help on this voyage of discovery and conversion to Christianity, of 
whatever peoples he would meet. Makes you wonder what God would say to Columbus today. If God had to do it all over again, <laughs> would he have picked Columbus and what would have been done differently? And what a striking example of the world that Columbus came from, that where he prayed and took communion while he was preparing for a journey that would change the world forever, was in a chapel that used to be a mosque, and that the doorway was still the original mosque doorway. I mean, if anything talks about our interconnectedness more than, than that, I don't know what it is. The East meets the West here in Spain, and then Europe meets the further West in the Americas. It all becomes a grand mix. I'm actually in the very place where Columbus would have prayed before going to the Americas for the first time and before talking to Queen Isabel and Ferdinand. Columbus must have been very, very nervous, probably very hopeful, <laughs> ready to make a lot of money, but really nervous as, as hell because just a small group of people with, uh, imagining going to India, they would have maybe had lots of weapons. I mean, regardless of, of uh, what can be said about Columbus, he must have been a person of incredible faith. And so must have been the people that went with him. Either that or they were just desperate to get out of their situation. And in that case, they probably would have prayed in a place like this too. I love the silence in a place like this and the, the echo. It just, it's like it creates a space for your thoughts, for your dreams and your hopes. It probably must have been the same for Cristobal Colon. The walls are really, really beautiful. It looks either Arab, Moorish influenced, or maybe possibly it was Moorish at one time. I hope you've enjoyed this off the beaten path, but culturally and historically delicious destination here in the south of Spain. It's one of the places that I've always wanted to go and which you never would really know about unless you're really getting deep into the path of Christopher Columbus. But what significance it has. So what happened next? In the next video, you're gonna get to see the actual ships that Columbus set sail on in the actual place that Columbus set sail from. We're gonna go down the hill from this monastery and actually board the ships. Come with me.